Hi everyone, I'm back again. Um, ho hope you're doing really well. So uh, yes, I have not podcasted for a very, very, very long time um, and I've decided to come back. <laughs> um, I don't really know why I stopped podcasting, I just did and my cat is moving around outside so I hope she doesn't start meowing. Um, but yes, I'm really, really happy to be back and I have lots of um, things to show you and to um, talk about. So I guess um, first of all, what I should do is just um, introduce myself because it's been a very long time and might have people who don't know who I am um, watching. So I'm Kristen. Um, you can find me on Instagram. I'm Skane Yarn on Instagram and I am K10, that's K10 on Ravelry. And um, I am the dyer of Skane Yarn. Um, I've been dyeing yarn for 13 years this year. So we started back in, or I started back in 2010. And um, yeah, I absolutely love what I do. My husband. Uh, a few years ago joined me full-time because I desperately needed help um, with orders and packing and um, so yes he came on board and and he does all that now so we run the business together and yeah we're here in Coffs Harbour and um, there is talk of um, opening up our little shop so we have a space in the industrial area we've got a and a shed, it's like a shed, like a, I don't know what you call it, a complex, a little small little complex. And it has um, a front room, an office, a middle room where we do our, all of the packing. And then at the back is where I do the dyeing. So um, for a very long time, I've been dying to open up the front room. We actually had painted it and got started to get it already. And then COVID hit um, and then we couldn't open up the shop and then I kept putting it off because I wasn't quite sure what was happening with COVID because the rules kept changing about having shops and people and the public in and I kind of I had so much to do that I didn't really have headspace to work all that out so I just left it. Anyway, um, yes, it kind of feels like now is a good time. So um, we are getting things ready. Um, it's it's a, quite a lot of work. You've got to obviously work out payment systems and um, I have a lot of the shelving and things ready but I need to get more stock in the shop so yes um, it's very exciting I guess that's maybe why I started the podcast too because yeah it's something different we're starting something different with the business and um, I am podcasting here at home today obviously but hopefully once we have all the shop done and ready um, then I can start podcasting from there so I can give you a little tour so exciting and I hope you know people can come in and say hi uh, and visit be really really nice so that's that okay so um, oh and I will say if you have any questions about what I'm talking about and um, if you're wanting to know about the projects or whatever I will be putting links below but if there's anything else you need to know just please comment below I read all the comments so and I reply to everybody so um, yeah okay uh, I am wearing um, one of my favorite cardigans of this year is the it's the classic smocking cardigan by petite knit um, I made this quite a few years ago and I don't know why but it was um, folded up in my cupboard and um, yeah, I just found it. I was going through what I had. I mean, I have so many knits. It's not funny. I've got um, cardigans, sweaters, shawls, cowls, you name it. They're, I've just got so much stuff. Um, yes, and it's all packed in a cupboard and I was going through it and I found it and I put it on and I absolutely love it. So I've been wearing this a lot. Um, I actually knit this with an old yarn base called Voyage DK. Um, which is a superwash merino. We don't have it anymore, unfortunately, um, but our Cushy DK is very similar. Um, it is in the color Eden. Again, I change dyes because <laughs> I've been dying for so long. Things change. I have a change up of bases, change up of dyes. Anyway, so yeah, the color is, uh, I dyed this with our old um, dye brand. I have 
I'm using different dyes now so I can't reproduce this color but it's a gorgeous sort of tealy green um, yeah and it's called Eden and I am really really loving this cardigan I can um, button it right up if I want to and it's um, it's got this lovely smocking pattern which actually um, looks difficult uh, to knit or well, not so much difficult but a bit of a pain but it's really not I actually really enjoyed knitting this so I'll stand up so it's the cardigan so it's the smocking is on the back as well as on the front and yeah buttons and it's very very nice really really happy with it so yeah um, what I have been knitting on is uh, I just actually finished this one. Um, this is a Stephen West shawl pattern called Islet Burst Shawl. And I did kits for this on the shop. They're still on the shop. And um, it's basically four skeins of yarn that fade. Um, I guess that's why it's called Islet Burst because you're going from light to dark. Um, so this is it here. Now I haven't blocked this. It's just off the needles I still have a marker on it <laughs> uh, so it's it's sort of kind of hard to show but it has these lovely points so it it fits really nicely um, I've the kits that I have on the shop uh, use our uptown sock which is a single ply yarn now I know that a lot of people have um, reservations when it comes to single ply yarn particularly for sweaters and cardigans um, I I've used it and I don't seem to have too much of a problem um, with the wear and tear I, I wouldn't uh, make kids sweaters out of um, this kind of yarn and I probably wouldn't give it to someone who doesn't know how to take care of knitwear but if you do take good care of it um, and you wash it properly and depill and all that sort of stuff it actually does last quite well um, this one doesn't have nylon in it it's just plain um, merino and um, yeah oh, colors if I can remember uh, lemon zest mystic and bay now mystic and bay very very similar but you can see there's just a slight tonal difference or shade difference goes lighter darker and then first frost um, it's just simply bound off at the end with um, I cord bind off and yeah I've got ends to weave in and I have to block it so it's pretty much fresh off the needles funnily enough um, even though the pattern is extremely simple and quite delightful to, to knit in front of the TV um, I just made a million mistakes I missed yarn overs I did yarn overs in weird places I I don't even know what happened but I don't know if you guys find that too when the patterns very simple it's just so easy to make mistakes um, I can knit you know something like this or complicated lace or um, cables and I never seem to have well I mean I have the occasional oopsie but this one oh my god I just made so many mistakes but it's not a major issue I kind of fudged there's one I fudged uh, yarn overs and increases and sort of tried to make them look there somewhere see I did a pretty good job I hit it it's there so yeah I mean it doesn't matter you're not gonna notice it when you wear it but yeah it's just funny that that happens when something so simple um, you know causes so many troubles <laughs> so yeah that's West Knits uh, eyelet burst shawl and of course I love his patterns and at the time that I knit this I really really um, wanted something very easy just to kind of sit and chill while I watch TV and it was summer uh, at that stage too so um, yeah I wanted something lightish to knit because yeah it gets very very hot here and humid so the last thing you want is a sweater on sitting on your lap um, 
so that's really the only thing I've finished. I have finished other things, but I, I'll just go on forever. So I'll just finish with that one, end with that one. Um, my works in progress, I have a lovely pair of socks. I have finished one and I'm onto the second. Um, this is just using our vanilla sock pattern, which is free on Ravelry. I, I'll put a link below. Um, yeah, it's just basic sock. Nothing too exciting. Um, I am hoping to have these done as a little sample for the shop because I am, again, hoping to dye up quite a few um, sock sets because they're always fun to have. Um, I gotta stop saying um, I keep saying it. So this is a micro striping sock and basically that happens when you dip dye yarn um, and in small circumference knitting like socks and gloves and things like that, it creates these little micro stripes. It's actually a form of pooling, um, but they pull nicely like that. Of course, if you knit a jumper or something with this colorway, it would be crazy pulling everywhere. So they look great with socks. And of course, I, I would love to be able to dye up, um, what do you call it, self-striping socks. I've tried it, it's so hard. I don't know how dyers do that. I take my hat off to them. Like, it's just such a process and it's, it's really hard. So uh, this is like a, an easy way <laughs> to get stripes when you dye, when you dye yarn. Um, I did, don't know whether I mentioned, but this is um, our one a sock club color from last year. So I have a sock club called Street Feet Sock Club and it's a BFL sock base. Street Feet is our BFL sock base. It has a little bit of nylon in it. And I usually st stray from using um, BFL because I find it can be a bit toothy um, and even though it's socks I don't love the feeling of wearing them I find them a bit too rough but this um, sock yarn is actually really really nice and I'm super pleased I found it so it is a lot softer and I really really like it I've also knit um, lots of pairs for friends um, and family and um, and for myself and they last really well so yay for that what else okay the last thing I have on my needles is a vest and uh, I guess because this winter hasn't been as cold as other winters um, what I would really love is just to have a vest that I can put on with a long sleeved uh, shirt underneath and I do, again, have kits on the store uh, for vest number one. And that is by My Favourite Things. I don't know her actual name, but she goes by My Favourite Things. That's what's on the pattern. Um, it's very, very simple vest, just top down. It's a high neck. Uh, I am going to actually crop it. It is quite cropped anyway in the pattern. But I only really just cast this on yesterday and look at that, I've got lots done. So that's um, the, that there is the armhole and this is the back. And I've just picked up for the front here. So it's gonna be really, really quick. Her, the pattern itself is for written for DK. It is actually quite a chunky gauge for a DK yarn and I cast on using the uh, needles that was recommended but I actually had to go up to it's it should be knit in 4.5 whatever that is in US I'm not sure but I had to go up to a 5 uh, to get gauge and I had actually knit quite a lot because I was pretty sure that I would get gauge with the yarn and the needles um, but no it didn't happen and I, I almost kept going, <laughs> you know, when you have that thing and you're like, oh, I've done so much, I'm just gonna keep going. But I know that it probably would have fit quite tight and yeah, better to rip back at the beginning than to hate it at the end. So um, yeah, I, I'm glad I did. And really it didn't take long to get back to where I was. 
So this is one of our new colours, uh, which is Deco Rose. And I spoke about these on Instagram. I love knitting with tonal yarn, tonal colours. And tonal colours are basically ones, I mean, you probably know this, but for those who don't, tonal colours are ones where you, as a dyer, lay layer colour one on top of the other. And what it does, it, it creates... Um, this really nice tonal effect and it gives depth to colour so it's not this flat uh, um, flat like one colour it's like got all these lovely colours in it which from afar you can't tell but when you get up close and you're knitting with the yarn you can see it and you can probably see it here so I had uh, it's got bright pinks it's got um, a little bit of orange and a touch of red that's it. It's really, really pretty. Uh, I don't usually knit with pink. Uh, I do knit with pink yarn, what am I saying? But I don't usually knit whole garments. Like, I like having a little touch of pink. So this is um, going to be different for me. So yeah, that is the vest number one by my favourite things designer. And now on to... Uh, what's coming up what's going to be on my needles very very soon um, so I have a what's it called Saldotna um, crop at work by Caitlin Hunter and I knit that quite a few years ago I like it um, the only thing is I probably I didn't check my gauge when I knit it and it is just a fraction tight I mean it's still wearable and I love it but it's just a little bit tight and it's um, quite cropped so um, I've had it in my shop I took it to Bendigo it was like a kind of a sample knit uh, but I don't dye those colors anymore and yeah I wanted actually to wear it so I've decided to cast on another sole dot in a crop and I am using our uh, cushy oh DK which the vest that I just showed that's cushy DK as well and it's just a merino 100% superwash merino now um, Sol dot crop usually has four colors um, but what I've decided to do is three colors and I've looked at the pattern and the schematic and the charts and everything to see if I could do it that way and should be pretty easy so I'm hoping it's going to work because <sighs> I couldn't decide on the fourth color and I wanted to use colors that I've just dyed and I had a skein left over from an old batch so yeah I was kind of trying to put everything together and that's what I decided to do so I guess we'll see if it'll work uh, I have uh, olive that will be the main color around the neck the main body colour will be, this is a new colour called Parchment. We just added that to the shop today. And I've got three of these skeins. So this will be body and part of the colour work. And the other section of the colour work, whoops. Because you know how there's that big kind of stripe, if you're familiar with the pattern, uh, goes kind of across here. That will be in pink. So I think these look quite nice together and it's definitely my colour palette. I love green, again pink, just the hint and I absolutely love this. This uh, is an interesting kind of yellowy grey and when I put it next to the other colours at work it just goes with everything. It's amazing. I'm really really happy with this one. So that will be cast on probably this weekend. And the other thing that I wanted to mention is Hockey Locatelli today came out with two lovely patterns. One was Solaire, which is a um, cable, a very chunky cable yoke. And uh, again, that's knit. Well, hers is knit in using worsted. Oh, my cat's at the door. I'm just going to let her in. Yes, yeah, so um, Solaire pullover, it's got the chunky cables on the yoke and just a stockinette body and it's really really lovely and it'd be great for this time of year um, the yarn that she's used is a Mayak worsted yarn uh, but when I looked at the yardage and the weight it is very similar to our cushy DK and our cushy DK which is what I've been showing you um, that's actually quite a chunky DK yarn so I'm pretty sure 
uh, well, I know I'll get gauge with that. So I am going to use a color, dye up a color. Tomorrow, actually, I'm going to be putting kits out for the Solaire pullover. So if you're interested, um, all of our sweater and shawl kits come with 10% discount. So if you're interested in knitting along with me, I would love that. Um, yeah, even if you're not using our yarn, it'd be great if you could knit along with us, with me. I keep saying us. I think it's having a business, you tend to say us. I don't know why. Uh, the other thing is, uh, the other um, pattern that Hockey uh, released is uh, Soto Isol, which is a beautiful uh, shawl pattern. It's sort of, I think it's garter stitch from memory and then it has this lovely lace section that runs through. And again, she made this with Mayak. She's on a retreat at the moment with Mayak, the woman who runs Mayak. And so it was sort of a part of this retreat these patterns and um, I it was kind of a blessing in disguise that she released both of these patterns because next week uh, we are going to be releasing some new yarn and it's so new I haven't even got a name for the base um, it is a very fluffy um, uh, alpaca cotton and alpaca cotton and merino so it's a fingering weight yarn. Hello, Ricky. <laughs> it's no. Shh. It's a fingering weight yarn, and um, the pattern itself is fingering weight. So, and it looks like that her the yarn that she used also has a, a little bit of a halo to it too. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking this yarn will be great for that pattern. So yeah, uh, I don't really know what to call this. It's a fingering weight, like I said. If anybody has any ideas on what to call this, I would love, look, help me out, put a, a comment in the, um, below. Oh God, terrible. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've podcasted. But yeah, it's lovely. Look at that. And you can see the cotton is actually the core of the yarn. So it's all been spun around this cotton core, um, which is the merino and alpaca. So the cotton is the thread in the middle and that doesn't dye because not with the, um, the dyes that I use because our dyes are acid dyes and they're fiber reactive. Um, but with plant materials, it won't dye. So yeah, it's the um, shawl that I'm going to knit requires two skeins of the main color and then one of the contrast. So this will be the lace bit that goes through the middle and this is gonna be the main section. So I think that'd be quite pretty. Um, yeah, what was I gonna say? Uh, the, yeah, the cotton core doesn't actually show up that well with the lighter skeins because yeah, you can't really, I mean, you can see it a little bit there, but with the darker colors, you can really notice it. So this uh, yarn, like I said, I don't have a name. If you have if any suggestions at all, please put it in the comments. Um, this will be going, these yarns will be going live next week. So yeah, that is all for me. And what have we got? 24 minutes, so that's perfect. Um, so it's so nice to be back and um, yeah, uh, like I said, all the everything that I've spoken about, the links will be below and yeah um please say hi in the comments that we know you've watched and um that you're still there <laughs> and yeah i probably will be uh doing these once a month maybe a little bit sooner than once a month we'll see i'm just gonna see when i can fit it in and i i'll post a a new podcast when i can so yeah it's so nice to be back and i'll talk to you next time bye